Hello everyone. This is a new Max for Life device which will switch between playback MIDI and live MIDI. So if I want to play something live, <laughs> I'm not very good in playing and talking at the same time. But if I want to go back, I just need to release the note. So this is a full pack of two different Mm, actually four different MIDI devices, uh, Max for Life devices here. So Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. Otherwise you can't use Max for Life devices. So um, this is for having playback MIDI running but interacting with that really quickly if you want to and do something live and just release the note come back or a second uh, technique here a second Max for Life device which will let you count down from uh, a certain number of bars and then it will automatically start playing again so those are two techniques here they are not really complicated so um, I will show you that in this tutorial I will do a whole run through just so that you understand the purpose here is to be able to play stuff live and then if you want to go back you can just release and your MIDI playback will be playing so let's go through this how this is set up so in the main let's turn on the metronome here so the main one I'm playing here is actually I have this MIDI clip here which has MIDI data with a sustain pedal. We will come to that sustain pedal info in here as well. We will come to that later. But we have MIDI notes playing here already. And this is just on an empty, well on, on, on a MIDI track which is set to not receive any MIDI and it's not sending out any MIDI, but this device on here is receiving this MIDI from this MIDI clip and is sending that via, and you can select different MIDI virtual cables here. So MIDI play B1, for example. Oops, I need to select MIDI play back one here. Um, and then this is being received via this device here. MIDI playback one is selected here as well. And this way the MIDI is being received on this track here and being sent to the instrument. An electric, really nice um, roady sound here. So on this track I have a second input. I have the, my live, my live MIDI keyboard input here which is the SL studio here so this is being received this is routed into the track you can do that via monitor in or via auto and arming the track so live MIDI is being received and this device now here will switch between the two different MIDI sources so the MIDI clip MIDI clip here automatically but as soon as I play some MIDI it's only listening to the live MIDI I put in here and if I don't play any note and I just release that it will jump back to the playback MIDI. So this is really obvious here now I guess that it's switching back and um, it will, and that's one technique here which is really useful, it will replay the current notes which are still ringing in the playback. So if you have a look here, so if you have some really long chords, for example, and if you switch back at this point here, for example, those notes are already ringing and they are not being re-triggered per default, but you can set this up to do that via the device so that means if you turn that on it will play the notes which are still kind of like still being hold in from the MIDI playback so if I turn that off for one second you can hear there is a little gap in between here it's it's quite um, it's not very long notes in the MIDI playback, but if you have a full chord and you have the chord being played on the one, but then you're switching back to the MIDI playback on the three, 
it won't re-trigger those chords, but you can switch on rebang playback MIDI notes and as soon as you release and don't play any notes, the current notes will be re-triggered if that's what you need. So there is a second technique here, which is included a second device, which works a little different. It's a counting down. So it mute bars. So when you play a live note, it will mute um, the MIDI playback for a preset amount of bars. So that makes sense if you have, for example, this one running um, for four bars, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. So if I'm now coming in, you can see now a countdown appears here as well on the device. And even if I keep playing live MIDI, it will switch back automatically. Okay, so the um, switching back here now works via a preset amount of bars. This becomes really handy. If we're talking about drum stuff, I will do a second video for that. If you're doing finger drumming or if you're doing um, live drumming, notes are not being sustained like they are on a keyboard here. So this switching back after a certain amount of bars totally makes sense for this purpose. So um, there is a reset button on both devices here. So if something is not quite working or if you, for example, came into late and now you are like, oh, I'm not in the right structure. I quickly want to jump back. You can quickly hit reset and it will jump back, open the gate for the MIDI playback. And you can set this up to be a MIDI note obviously as well. So I just um, have this one MIDI note here being MIDI mapped to this button. One example of how to MIDI map stuff here in Ableton Live, but I just for showing purposes used a MIDI note from my actual keyboard here. So I just need to select the reset button, um, hit the MIDI note here, and then I can use that straight away. So if I per default, Oh, wrong structure, wrong structure. Um, maybe we go back and then you're back again. So it's kind of like a little panic and making sure you're, um, if something goes wrong. Okay, so sustaining is another, um, can be a little issue in Ableton Live generally. So I have a full pack on for Max for Live device for fixing different sustain uh, pedal issues here. If you're playing keys, uh, professionally, um, you're obviously gonna use, in most cases, or in a lot of cases, you will use a um, sustain pedal, which you can't see, but you are maybe able to hear that I'm pressing this um, now. So we already have sustain info in the our MIDI playback here. We can have a look at this if we go to the envelope section. We'll look a little bit different on Ableton 11, but it's the same menu selection here. So on 64, we can see that we have this uh, info here for when our sustain pedal is being pressed and released. And this is a little bit tricky. If you, if you have sustain pedal issues already, uh, have a look in the video description here. There's a link to my um, pack, which solves quite a lot of uh, sustained pedal issues in Ableton Live. For this particular use case here, if you are using the sustain pedal, you would need the translate sustain to note on and off device here, and you would need it twice. It's included in this pack for MIDI playback. So if you buy the MIDI playback pack here, you will have this device here as well. And it's taking the sustain pedal information and it's, um, converting MIDI notes to on and off messages. Um, that's all you need to know, I guess, and where you need to place it. So you want to place this on your dummy, on your playback MIDI track in front of the MIDI sending device. And you want to place one of those in front of your um, receiving device here. So uh, just to give you one example, um, if I play some stuff here and now I'm hitting my, I'm pressing my sustain pedal, I release all notes 
and but I'm still have notes ringing. This is musically so my note off is a little bit later. Sorry, uh, wrong device here. I meant this one. So if we play, my notes are still ringing and because of the conversion the note off is now being sent when I release the pedal. So then it's going back. Okay, so this is uh, just a little uh, thing you need to implement and you need to use two of those devices if you're using your sustain pedal info here in the dummy clip and you want to send MIDI note on and off no, on and off info you don't want to send sustain pedal info here because that wouldn't work so that's why this device or those two devices here are being needed just to let you know this is um, not working for MPE stuff because the whole MPE implementation here would get really confusing, different channels, etc. So we are not using, and you won't be able to use the whole aftertouch sliding things here, but for I think 90% of the use cases, this will work fine. And you can improvise, go back quickly. Ah and go in again okay so this is the midi playback stuff here um, you will get those <laughs> at the link in the video description at my homepage ableton.com have fun um, doing music and with max for life and with my max for life devices take care bye bye